it's another day in the shop. This bike is almost done. It just has some small things to take care of, some a few things to finish putting on it. Today we're going to do the air box and the breather system. Air box is a little dirty inside. There's a small spider web back there. And some grease and a little bit of dust. Found a nice unifilter to use. Got to put on the breather system, the crankcase breather. So this has been sitting around for some months and we just need to get all this slight coating of dust off it. This is one of the reasons I'm putting this particular 2000 air box on the 96. It's got this brace inside that makes it harder to deal with. There's a lot of really gooey stuff on there. I'm gonna need a cleaning agent. This grease that is really tough grease, WD-40 breaks it down pretty good. I've never really liked doing air boxes. It's important to get this mating surface here for the air cleaner as clean as you can well it's important to get a seal there as good as you can keep dirt out we're going to do an air cleaner job and we've got this unifilter which looks pretty good as far as unifilters go but I don't have a single bike that uses an unifilter. This looks like it's never had oil on it ever. There's your air cleaner. See it? Can you see that? And we're just going to go ahead and put this right back on there. Hopefully it's easy to do. Okay, so with these, they're saying to put a, a light coating of grease on here to help it seal inside the box. I don't know that that's going to do a whole lot for us. But the last thing I want is to put a bunch of dirt inside the motor. Let's see, while we got the gloves on, let's see if we can just go put this thing in. I know it's kind of dark in there for you right now. It's dark for me too. And you know, these things don't fit good. That was my observation when I took this one guy's bike apart and it just wasn't properly on there. And he had just carburetor filled with dirt. That is not in place. We need light. So let's get a flashlight on that and see what we got. No, it's not on on the other side. 
See, that's the problem. It's almost there, but it's, uh, the far top doesn't appear to be on. Might be able to kind of pry that up, you know, because I can't get my hand in there. I've got this breather system I need to put on. This is kind of a rare bird. It's a closed system crankcase breather. Crankcase gases come up from the crankcase, go into the top of the breather. Excess air goes into the air box inside the air cleaner. Oil that gets separated drains back into the motor. Closed system. Somebody who had this motor before used a K&N filter right here on top of the crankcase. Apparently it's got to go up and over the top of the shock somewhere. Over the top of who knows what. Okay, I haven't tried it yet. But this thing is going to have to go over the top right there. There's a spot for it. It's going to have to fit there. So one side goes down in there. Okay, so it's gonna have to go there, it looks like. Over the top, then hook to the canister there. So let's see if we can get that in shape. So that's where it's supposed to go. It's hooked on here, comes over the top of the shock supposed to mount on a tab on the frame which this frame doesn't have the only thing I don't like about it is the low spot down here out of the drain you can't really get all the lowness out of that so it's just gonna have to sit low hopefully it still drains oil back well we're getting really close to starting this bike up we're not there yet there's there's a bunch of little things that, you know, I didn't feel like doing, still need to be done. This is your first time with a reveal of what the tank's going to look like. But somebody painted it black. And that makes it the worst. And to top it off, the petcock took a dump on me. It holds gas. But when you turn it on, reserve or, or main, then it leaks. So it's no good. So let's compare this. Here they've got a pretty tight O-ring. One's just as bad as the other. Since this is uh, made for this, I think we'll go with it. I don't want no leaks, but hopefully they got it together. They do their job right and there are no leaks. Okay, there you go with that. Now, no leaks there. Got the tank holding gas, hopefully. And let's see about the engine holding oil. It was the 96. Everything was good. And I ended up taking the motor out of it and put it in the 95. So this frame just sat empty. Then the motor was in the 91 tracker. You remember the tracker, don't you? Yeah, the tracker. The motor came out of the tracker. And at one point I had it running. 
Okay, so there's a quart of oil inside the frame. I want to put a quart of oil in the motor too. You have to watch out you don't over tighten these. I can also tell you that it's no good if you lose one on the trail. So you got to have it tight enough. Two quarts for now. We'll wait till after startup to get a look at things. So, here's the seat I'm going to use. This is the seat off of the old 91. You remember the 91, don't you? Yeah, that's the, that was my second XR. I rode that for a long time. But it's been decommissioned and it's no longer getting used. But this is the seat that came on that bike. It's a guts covered seat and it's got the taller, thicker foam as well, which I was using for quite a long time. And I finally thought to myself how that was being detrimental to my being able to touch the ground. So I ended up uh, switching out to something else. It's not a seat that I would want to use without recovering it and going back to original foam but it's in pretty darn good shape got a spot here that I've made a repair on which is holding up well same thing over here a little unsightly but working but the thing about it is it needs it needs one of these splash guards for the air box Funny thing, this is the this is the one that came off of this in the first place. Oh, there goes another one. That was what I was. That's what I didn't want to happen. You gotta have a splash guard here, or you fill up your air box with muddy water. And that last one I tried to put on was just too old. So unfortunately, we're going to have to get a brand new one out for this. That looks like it'll do the job. I hate to give that up. I'm trying to spend as little money on this bike as possible. There goes some brand new money. But you can't have it go without a splash guard. You just can't do it. It's part of a complete bike. Okay, we'll take a look at this. Here's your tank hold down strap. And it's been surgically repaired. Like Frankenstein would get done. So now we've got it back in shape again. That was done on a previous bike, but it's still together, so I'm going to try to use it. Hopefully I don't have to use a new one. There goes another 17 bucks. This is, this is just a trail bike. So now when I get this going, I hope the carburetor doesn't start leaking or something, because I want to be done with it. Here we've got a UFO side cover and here we have what came off the black bike. These are the worst because the previous owner painted them black.
There, that's good enough, huh? I guess I could clean this a little bit. The thing about this too is because the IMS tank, previous owner cut these short. So I certainly want to get rid of those. Okay, I was keeping it a secret, but now the cat's out of the bag since you've seen the gas tank and you've seen the left side cover. You may as well see the fender. And you've seen the rear fender. It's all black. Previous owner painted this stuff black. And that's the worst. So it's a good candidate for going on the 96. I've got a whole bike's worth of 96 plastics that I'm saving. And they're not going here. I'm just, I got a tank and side covers and seat, everything. But it's not going here. The old 96 has got a front fender on it. Finally, it's looking decent. Black and white. That's what it's all about. Black and white. And she's got oil now. Got a breather system. Got an air cleaner. What else do we need to do? 